Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Unavowed. In the last episode, we found a little horse charm necklace with MS plus AF written on it. Now, MS, I am assuming, is May Stein. AF was on the, uh, the burned journal we found on the statue. Now, May, she hasn't exactly been evasive about the guy who burned himself, you know, in the park. However, she seemed to think it was some performance art. She didn't seem to think it was real. So I think it's best that we uh, we go over, we show her the necklace, and see if we can get any answers out of her. Come on, Juninator. It's way past your bedtime. Five more minutes. Okay, five more minutes. And I mean it this time. You don't. You don't mean it. You don't mean it at all. Yeah, so we, we can't pick this up, so I guess we just have to speak to her. Hey. Does this horse charm belong to you? Never seen it before. That is a falsehood. Your initials are inscribed on the charm. You calling me a liar? Yes. Sweetie, Mama's gonna step over there for a minute. You stay here, okay? Shit, god damn it. All right, take that stupid thing back to him. I don't want it. I don't want him. You misunderstand. He did not give this to us. It was hidden, enshrined, one might say. Enshrined? Of course it fucking was. Nobody does creepy like Amos Fennel. Does he worship it? Pray to it? No. If he did, he doesn't anymore. He's dead. He's... what? I am sorry. It is the truth. He is dead. Of... Of course he is. It was him, wasn't it? The guy who burned himself in the park. I didn't think it was real, but I should have known. It's exactly like him. It's exactly like him to set himself on fire? I'm sorry. We're trying to learn what happened. Ooh. Also, we have his name, Amos Fennel. I find that reaction so interesting. But one, it, it tells me that the breakup was messy. That and when she was like, oh, enshrined, of course it fucking was. Hmm. I'm drawn to I'm sorry. Brian is empathetic and like. This woman is clearly in distress. I'm sorry. Jesus, don't be. That guy scared the hell out of me. I suppose he's gone now. That's good, I guess. Could you tell us what you know? Anything at all? Fine, I guess. It doesn't matter now, does it? Amos used to be a good guy. An artist, creative, really, really funny. June loved him, but then he moved in with us, and... Then he started getting obsessive. Obsessive, yeah. I got that impression from him. You met him? Kind of. Oh, then you know what I'm talking about. He started drawing pictures of us. It was sweet at first, but he wouldn't stop. Every scrap of paper, every surface, the walls, the floor, everything. I blamed that teacher of his. A teacher? Yeah, old Stan Bates around the block. Amos was fine before he started taking lessons with him. I mean, how crazy is it to draw obsessively and never stop for a break? Uh... <laughs> Madam. Madam, you may be talking about your child there. Sure is crazy, all right. How long has your kid been out here again? Don't worry, we're going to fix this. Somehow. Or... Oh, Old Stan Bates. What did I say? What did I say before? This feels rude. It feels like we're calling her kid crazy. Oh. 
this also feels rude because it feels like we're saying her kid needs to be fixed. How long has your kid been out here again? A few hours. Why? Oh, look, I don't like that tone. June is fine. She isn't like him. Now, if you'll excuse me. I've, I've said it before. I'll probably say it again. Pick up your child. Weird shit is going on. Just pick her up and take her home. Uh, Logan? Hey, can we talk a bit more? I guess. Yeah, May Stein. You did all this because of May Stein, didn't you? Her gratitude is nothing. I had to cleanse. Cleanse? My feelings for May. They wouldn't leave me. I needed to cleanse them. The way Stan Bates taught me. Stan Bates taught you to burn yourself? No. He taught me to make a statement. Bring what's inside out into the open. It was the only way. Ah. Uh... His love was like a burning fire or something, and he wanted to bring that into the open. So he set himself on fire. There are lots of ways to deal with a breakup. Burning yourself alive is not even on the list. You don't understand. You don't know what it's like to have feelings. Feelings you can't get rid of. I understand, Amos. I understand more than you think. You do? I spent over a decade of my life trying to drink away feelings like that. But not anymore. No, I got help. I talked to people. Talking helps. It does? For a while, then you have to do it again. So, do you want to talk to us about it? More than anything. Okay. Just take KK's hand, and we'll talk. Is... Everything all right? Yeah, he's gone. There we go, Amos Fennel. He's now on the other side, but... Five more minutes, June. Seriously this time. Five minutes or... Oh, who am I kidding? Yep, there we go. She's finally accepted. She's gonna be out here all night. She's gonna have to sleep in the rain whilst June draws. Oof. Oof. KK wants to know about unicorns. Are they real too? They were. They were hunted to extinction centuries ago. Oh, that's a shame. No, it is not. Unicorns were violent, short-tempered, carnivorous monsters. They would gore anything without provocation. Be glad the world is rid of them. You just broke a little girl's heart. Oh! Poor KK! Poor KK, but also fuck unicorns! Fuck them! I'm with you, Mandana! They're overrated! Dragons are better! Oh! That was great! That was wonderful! Now that Sir! Sir! Good evening to you! Does the name Amos Fennel mean anything to you? Amos Fennel? No, doesn't ring a bell. He is the man who set fire to himself in the park. I see. No, I have not heard of him. Amos Fennel was a student of yours. A student? I'm no teacher. Who, who told you this? A former lover of his. A woman named May Stein. Wait, that name sounds familiar. She has a young daughter of... The budding little artist type? You are correct. Aha! Now I remember. Amos, huh? He gave me a different name when he came to see me. Ah, huh, that's weird. What can you tell us about Amos? What is there to tell? Like many young artists, he was struggling, trying to find inspiration. So he would come and speak to me. He spoke about his lover, who was quite smitten. I encouraged him to channel that love. We later spoke about his heartbreak after they separated. I encouraged him to channel that as well. I hope I did some good. Dude, he set himself on fire. He channeled his feelings into a work of art. How many can say the same? 
I call that a triumph. This neighborhood needs more of that. Uh, the neighborhood needs more self-immolation? What? What? I... J I... J I... Mm, this guy... He encouraged him to channel his love, so Amos drew May and June's picture all over the walls and floor of her apartment. She got so creeped out that presumably she kicked him out. And then Stan said, oh, channel your heartbreak. Channel your heartbreak. And so he sets himself on fire. I... And the fact that he's taken an interest in June. You know, oh, the budding little artist type. I can see him. I can see him, you know, like from his seat, he sees her drawing and so he decides to just, you know, go up and have a chat and encourage her. And I, yeah, I, uh, I think we found our muse. I think we found him. Setting yourself on fire is a triumph. Well, what would you call it? I would hardly consider it a call for celebration. I call it someone needing help. Perhaps you were both correct. Perhaps it doesn't matter. Art speaks different words to different people, and the art of Amos spoke louder than most. God damn. God damn. Have you ever spoken to the baker next door? You mean Clay Chipman? I see him every morning. His shop is not exactly out of my way. He feels frustrated, often. He desires to say something, but all he knows is baking. As I always tell him, sometimes the artist doesn't choose the medium. The medium chooses you. Medium. Did he have to use that word? I d I'm very concerned that if I go along a specific path, it's going to remove all the other questions. And I want to ask everything. That's my thought. I want to ask everything because I'm very intrigued by this guy. You said you knew May and her daughter? I know the child. She walks down this block on her way home from school. She's shown me some of her pictures. Quite a budding talent. I'm happy to encourage her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, there's there's the thing that'll move everything forward. Yet yeah, he's encouraged her and now she's now she's out on the street at night, you know, say, oh, no, I'm not going home, Mom, I'm not going home. Then we have a Clay Chipman who's just like, you know, think about the bagel when you eat it. What do you want? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Like, so snappy. They're consumed by the art. They're consumed by it to the exclusion of all other things kind of like um mori at the beginning of the game in the uh the actor background how he was uh you know typing away and like a little like a little goblin just leave me alone i'm working Ooh. so who else have you taught anyone who chooses to speak with me i'm usually here in this spot i'm always willing to chat and a bunch of artists have moved into the area recently. He's been talking to them, encouraging them, and it's been drawing them like moths to a flame. Oh, do I want to say this? If it's such good art, maybe you should set yourself on fire. Briny has never been this aggressive. I could maybe make a case for it, given that, you know, she is an actress. Art and creation and all of that is very important to her. And in Amos's case, apparently this was a quite a talented artist, sculptor, all of that. And because of, you know, Stan's meddling, he's set himself on fire. The world has been deprived of a creative soul because of Stan's meddling. So I could see a case for her saying, oh, why don't you set yourself on fire, dickhead? 
but I just, I just don't think she's that aggressive. We know what's been done to you. You've become a muse. I'm a what? I see it now. It is obvious in retrospect. What are you talking about? The creative energy that surrounds this neighborhood. It centers around you. Me? I'm nobody. Just a washed up artist. My muse is left. That is only partially true. You do not have a muse. You are a muse. Are you insane? Or am I? Look at what happens around you. What explanation is there? It's my fault. Kind of. It's complicated. We're not insane. Believe me, I know how weird this sounds. Um... These two seem a little... They seem kind of unnecessary. Surely it is better to try and persuade this guy, like, okay, look around you, blah, 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 rather than to be like, let me give you my backstory. <laughs> let me tell you of all the things we have seen. Look at what happens around you. What explanation is there? I want to say a rational one. But since when do I trade in reality? To get away from the truth, I can see the appeal. But perhaps we should discuss this off the street. Yes, of course, please. Come in. You must be soaking. Well, here we are. Is something the matter? Uh, what's the matter is the fact that the creepy music has started playing. I don't trust this. I would like to leave. I would like to leave. This place is bad juju. Your home is rather sparse. How long did you say you lived here? Are you sure you're an artist? We can we can see where pictures were. I would assume this is the outline of a couch. I'd... I also don't appreciate the music. As soon as we enter the house, the creepy music starts playing. Hmm. I could go for any of these. Uh, how long did you say you lived here? Some 30 odd years, why? 30 years? This place doesn't look like it's been lived in for 30 minutes. I admit, as I've gotten older, I've enjoyed life's little pleasures less and less. So I've sold a few things. Things that I no longer need. Yes. A muse can inspire art, but cannot appreciate it. I see. I understand. I admit I have been feeling different. I just thought I was getting old. Leave this in our hands. We will find a way to reverse this. Wait, do you want to... Cure me? Mandana, why did you say that? Why did you say that? The correct response was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. We're gonna go get some bagels next door. Would you like any bag? Like, that's the correct response. That's the plan. Why don't you want to be cured? Yes, so you can enjoy those little things again. Something he said before, he thought that the neighborhood was going to die. This neighborhood had this massive creative spirit. It was full of artists and, you know, poets, writers, all that good shit. And all of those people, they died off or they were, they had to sell up and he was the only one left. And now the neighborhood is, it's being revived. And he's taking so much pleasure in that. The pleasure he found in those little things, he's finding in seeing all of the creatives come back to the neighborhood. Why would he want to give that up? Why would he want to give that up? Or why? Don't you want to be cured? You're joking. You really are joking, aren't you? Why would I want to be cured? Sure, I get no pleasure from a painting or a book or even food. But giving artists inspiration, artists like Amos, like June, like Clay, that gives me immense satisfaction. You inspired Amos to kill himself. 
The others will surely follow. Your power is out of your control. Their deaths carry more meaning than their lives ever will. For years, I've seen the city turn its collective back on the art community, replacing us with bland corporate chains. Now we can reverse it. Go back to the way things were. And you want to stop it? I don't believe you want that. You can't want that. Let me prove it to you. I have a simple question for you. May I ask it? Buddy. Buddy. You can't do this. Just because someone disagrees with you doesn't mean you can knock them out and trap them in like a like a memory palace, doodad. God damn. I, if we don't play along, we're probably not gonna be able to get out. The more we talk, he'll have to respond and that can give us information. What is this place? I've connected you to the creative energy of the universe. I think I always knew it was there, but I'm more aware of it now, thanks to you. Now, may I ask you my question? I've got questions first. Where are you? I'm here. I'm part of the creative force that surrounds you. Now please, I've answered your questions. Will you answer mine? What do you want to know? Thank you. My question, question is simple. simple. What are you feeling right now? I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling happy. I'm not feeling anything. Ooh. If I'm feeling scared was up there, then I'd go for that in a heartbeat. But it's, it's between these two, angry and sad. I think primarily Briny is motivated by sadness. The sorrow she feels when she thinks back on that year that she was possessed. You, you might think, oh, why not anger? Why isn't she angry that she was possessed? She's not angry for herself. She's sad that her body was used to fuck up so many other people's lives. Bryony's an actress. I think all she's ever wanted to do is, you know, bring joy. You know, put on these plays that people can lose themselves in, have a good time. And that purpose was ripped away from her and she was used to, cre to create immense pain and anguish. And I think that makes her really sad. I'm feeling sad. Yes, I can hear it in your voice. What's bothering you? I've caused so much pain. It's not entirely my fault, but it doesn't matter. I'm seeing death and destruction all over. It's too much sometime. sometimes, excuse me. I don't know, I'm just sad. Do I need a reason? On second thought, maybe I'm not feeling sad after all. This. Literally, what did I just say? She's sad for all of the pain she's caused. I've caused so much pain. It's not entirely my fault, but it doesn't matter. It never does, does it? Seeing so much anguish, it's no wonder you don't lock yourself away. And yet, you act strong, don't you? You've risen up, because nobody else will. You bury, you bury this, this sadness, sadness deep, deep, but it is doing great harm. You need to dig deep. Connect to it. Bring it to the surface. This is the power of the creative force. It's the greatest gift we as humans are given. But it must be used. If ignored, it could do unimaginable harm. Oh. <laughs> oh. You don't remember drawing this. Looking at it sets your teeth on edge. Melkaressa. And 
Yeah, I, t- I noticed Logan and Mandana aren't with us. Oh shit. Oh, Stan. Stan. You can't be doing this. Oh. Hello? Mandana holds a spray can. Her eyes are locked on the orbs painted on the wall. Ooh. Split. Everything is split. Can. The truth is. The truth is. Okay, can we. <laughs> we beat her over the head with the thin, with the thin metal stick. I'm... I do not know. Must I know everything? These two worlds cannot connect. So much empty space between them. So much. Madonna, Madonna, you. T- A worn wooden staircase leads upstairs. Can we? KK, KK, can you help? Can you help us, KK? Logan holds his spray can as if his life depends on it. His hands are shaking. Can't go back. You reach the end, then what? It's there, it's always there. Gotta keep moving. Can't turn around, ever. He's running from his problems. Which way? There's only one. Okay, I... I I don't think... um, Unless we're gonna beat them round the head or choke them out with the the horse necklace, I don't think we've got anything here that can help. Calliope. Calliope's still in the, uh, the, the fucking bar. I mean, she's an ex muse She might know what to do. I... I find it interesting that we were able to bring ourselves out of it. I mean, obvi- obviously the reason for that is we are the main character and we have, you know, plot armor to some extent. But still, like, Mandana- Mandana's a half gin. Like, Log- Logan's mundane. Yes, he's a bestower, but he has no other supernatural abilities other than the fact that he can, you know, see, hear, and speak to ghosts. Like, Mandana is a half jinn. She is powerful, but she couldn't break herself oh, out of it. it's you. Sorry if I don't get up. I'm a little out of breath. Okay. Are you all right? You've stopped performing. I think I need your help. Are you all right? Me? I'm fine. Just a little winded, is all. By the way, where's Mandana and Mr. Big Shoulders? I thought you unavowed types worked in a team. We do! Oh, you don't look very well, Callie. We got whammied by the muse who has your power. I really think I need your help. So... Calliope doesn't have her powers anymore. However, I wonder... I wonder if she and Stan are connected. Just given the fact of, like, it was her power, now he has it. And by creating three little dream worlds... Because I'm, I'm assuming that's what's going on with Mandana and Logan. They're still stuck in, like, the... In the creative like, forces thing that Stan put us in, they're they're still trapped in that. By doing that, maybe Stan overexerted himself, and that's taking a toll on her. You don't look well, Callie. I'm just, like, a bit tired, okay? I overdid it. I'm not exactly used to being mortal. We got whammied by the muse who has your power. (laughs) Whammied. I like that word. Wait. Why did you summon a muse in the first place? We didn't summon him. He forced himself on us. He forced the creative energy on you? That's insane. You're lucky to be alive. You can't just force someone to create. You have to be ready. If not, you'll burn out. Your friends, where are they? Mandana and Logan are in Stan Bates' house. They're in some kind of trance. A trance? 
That can't be good. Take me to them. Oh. Hello! Callie looks angry. She follows a few steps behind you. Do you have anything Come to say? Come on, they need our help. Okay! Okay, fair dues. Two ladies on a mission. One looking significantly more fabulous than the other. Madam, do you have shoes? You, you should have put on some shoes. It's raining. And these are New York streets. They're gross. God, I... So I'm... I'm almost at the end of this episode, so I think I'm going to leave off here before the final confrontation. I find it so interesting that of all the things Briny could draw or write, because I mean, you know, we saw in there, Mandana had like two um, spheres, a gold one and a blue one, and Logan had done like a road that kind of split off into a bunch of... Um, almost like fractals yet Briny didn't do that and Briny's an actress she's extremely creative yet instead of drawing something she writes a single word I find that very interesting I find that extremely interesting um you know what, in between episodes, I think there are a couple of things I want to look at. Just... Just to refresh my memory, um... I've got a little bit of a theory in my head. And I, I want to investigate that, so I'm gonna look at some past episodes. Alrighty then, in the next one, a uh, Briny and a uh, Calliope going... <laughs> Hopefully we can get Logan and Mandana out of their trances, but until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista, thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.